students in physics in the section mechanics now we are going to see another experiment this is about using the hairs apparatus and finding the relative density of a liquid we already have seen in the previous experiment how to find the relative density of a liquid using youtube so when i was explaining about youtube i mentioned if the particular liquid is mixing with water right if it dissolves in water then youtube method cannot be used if both both liquids mixes because you remember we first fill the youtube with water on top of that we add the oil since oil and water doesn't mix it was okay think about something like sulfuric acid if you add it on top of the water it's going to get mixed with water therefore youtube method of finding relative density wouldn't be possible if the particular liquid mixes with water but this method we will have both liquids that means water and the particular liquid separately they will not get in contact therefore even if it is any liquid that can mix with water still we can use this method that's a special special advantage of this method hairs apparatus let me show you how the hairs apparatus will look like look at this there will be two vertical tubes right this is how it is going to be there will be a clip right it will be fixed on a vertical board a wooden vertical board it will be fixed so what we can do we can take let's say this is the water a small beaker with water you keep it here and then another beaker with the particular liquid let it be oil or some other liquid as sulfuric acid or whatever you keep it in another beaker under the next side of the tube right now see right now if this clip is open if this clip is open think about the pressure at this point this point and inside the tube at the same point that means water surface outside the tube and inside the tube check the pressure outside the tube it is exposed to environments therefore it should have environmental pressure we usually mark it as pi oa and inside the tube at the same liquid level we know we studied within a liquid if the liquid is continuous at same horizontal levels the pressure has to be same that means at this point also you will have a pressure of pi same happens on the other side also this will be pressure of high pi this is when this clip is open we have not done anything right after keeping those two beakers of liquids the pressure is going to be like that but what we are going to do after that interesting we will remove this clip we will remove this clip and we are going to suck the air out of it we are just going to suck it right you can keep your mouth here and suck some of the air out of it then when you suck the air out of it you know more air particles which were inside earlier will be released out then the density of air particles inside the tube is going to be less you will have less molecules in fact when the number of molecules reduces the pressure also reduces which means inside this tube the pressure is going to be let's say p0 it's going to be less than pi once you 
suck some air out of this tube. So the moment pressure reduces within the tube, then what will happen? The liquid levels will start going up. They will start going up. Then what will happen? Look at this. The oil or this is water. This is water. Water level will come up. Let's say it has come up to this. The water column. Similarly, the oil column as well. You might be wondering which column is going to be taller. Depends on their density. The liquid with less density will have higher column. So here since it is oil compared to water, oil's density is less. Therefore, oil column is higher. Why do I say that? Now look at the pressures. Now look at the pressure. This is not going to be pi. We will say y. Right? We will discuss about these pressures again. This will be anyway. These two will be anyway pi because they are exposed to the environment. Since again if you look at this same, same level of liquid, therefore I can say it pi. Still it is pi. Early also it was pi, now also it is pi. Even here same, same liquid level at the same horizontal level it is going to be pi. But there is another method to calculate this pressure at this point. How? I can calculate vertically. If it is P0 here, P0 here means entire space is going to be P0. P0 plus, if I measure this height, let this height be, let's say this height is, this is water, right? HW. And this height is H oil or H liquid. Then, about this point, I am writing the pressure. Look at this. P node plus HW rho W G. Correct? At this point. Similarly, on the other side, on the other side, here it is P node. This is HL rho L G. But we already know that those two points also have the atmospheric pressure. So let it be equal to pi. Why is it equal to atmospheric pressure? Once again, look at the beaker. The other part of the beaker is exposed to the environment. So the pressure at this point has to be the environmental pressure. Then the point inside the tube that we consider is also at the same horizontal, horizontal level of this point. Continuous liquid, same horizontal line, horizontal level, therefore same pressure it has to be. That is how I mark this point as pi. Now look at this, both are equal to atmospheric pressure. Equate them, P node plus HW rho W G, P node plus HL rho L G, because both are equal to pi, both are equal to pi. Now cancel P node, P node, HW rho W G is equal to HL rho L G. Cancel G and G, make HW the subject, you will have HL over HW, no, rho L over rho W, rho L over rho W multiplied by HL. Take this in the y axis, take this in the x axis. How do I take different pairs of HW and HL? The amount of air you suck out of this, if you vary that, if you suck a little bit of air only, the heights will be less. If you, if you suck more air out of it, the height will be more. Right, so depending on how much of air you are pulling out, the heights will be different. So accordingly, you can take HW, HL, different, different pairs of values and Draw the graph HW on the y axis, HL on the x axis. Then the gradient of the graph will be equal to uh, rho L over rho W means that is the relative density of the liquid that we have used. You must be careful when you are when you are pulling the air out of it, when you are sucking the air, make sure you do not you don't pull too much of air out of it because then what will happen? Whichever the less dense liquid that is what goes faster up. 
that might come to this point and it might fall into the other side as well. So to avoid that, we, sh we should ensure the liquid columns do not come to the top. We must at least stop it here. Another reason is after that the tube also curves, then you won't have the vertical distance. So this must be the maximum point where the, 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 the columns come up. Which column you have to focus more when you think about this? Whichever the less dense liquid because that is what has the higher column, right? So before water reaches here, oil will reach here. If you can ensure oil does not reach here, definitely water will not reach there because water is more dense, then the height will be less. Understand? So that is one precaution you have to do. Another thing, if this acid is something that is hazardous or poisonous, say, let us say you are using high dense, high, highly concentrated sulfuric acid. So highly concentrated acid is not good to be exposed to the uh, body, right? Then you should be you should be you know pulling the air out of it using your mouth. Then we can use another arrangement like a syringe. You can fix the syringe here, pull the syringe out, then the pressure will reduce here. Or else you can use like once in the exam paper we will be seeing after the practical. Uh, once they have asked using a Bernoulli's concept. They made an arrangement, you know Bernoulli's concept we study in mechanics. Using that concept they arranged, they made an arrangement here to reduce the pressure inside. So those kind of some setup would be required to, you know, reduce the pressure inside the tube. Suppose if this liquid is poisonous or hazardous, right? So those precautions you have to be careful. And there is one more thing. Now this thing is going to be like this whole setup will be fixed on a wooden board behind it. Look at this, how the board is going to be. This is how the board will be. So what is the problem having board like this? Let me draw this again, a bit enlarged. Look at this. This is your tube, right? I have enlarged it. And your board, This is how the board is going to be. This is where you have kept the water. Right, I am drawing it enlarged. Huh? Let us say this is where the water level is. You know the water level, the top will not be horizontal, it will be a meniscus. Meniscus. This is the water level. Right, let me draw it again. Right. Right. This is all water. Now look at this, the scale that is stuck on this board, the, the board will have the scale on it to get the length measurements, the height measurements. The scale is going to be starting like this. Somewhere here you will have 0, then you will have 1 centimeter, 2 centimeter. This is how it is going to go up. Whereas the height that I have to measure, the height that I have to measure, understand if there is a meniscus, you have to get the lower end of the meniscus. Look at this. Right, that is the point we have to measure. Even though meniscus is curved, the lower point of the meniscus is what you have to read as the reading. This is the height we have to measure. This is the height we have to measure. This is what I will take it as HW. But your scale starts from here. So how do we do this? There is a small indicator pin, we call it an index. That index will be there attached to this tube. Usually with hairs apparatus, you this, this index also comes. Both sides, both limbs, you will have those indices. If not, even you can take a stick or a small pin and you can, you know, fix it with this tube with a rubber band. Understand what this part is? Uh, this part I have taken, look at this. This part I have taken and I have enlarged it here. I am drawing it big for you to understand. Like this on the other side, you have the other tube as well. 
this is just the you know close up look of that part then what happens there will be a pin the pin is going to be look at this the pin will be something like this This is how the pin is going to be. This is how the pin is going to be. How do we use this pin? Once you are ready to take the reading, you can you know adjust this pin up and down. Make sure the tip of the pin, the tip of the pin just touches this water surface. Right? Careful because when you are when you are when the when the water column goes up and up, the amount of water in this beaker will reduce. So, water level will go down. So, whatever the water level you have in the beaker, accordingly you have to adjust this index. Make sure the tip of the index just touches the surface of water. Then the reading we are going to take, very simple look at this. We will be getting this reading. We will be getting this reading. Then let this be reading 1, let this be reading 2. The difference between reading 1 and reading 2 will give you this height, correct? Right. But that height is not HW. With this height, what else do you have to add? What else do you have to add? The length of this index. So, before the experiment or after the experiment, separately you have to measure the length of this index. Very simple. Just push it up. Bring this pin, bring this tip to the zero level. And then you can see where this index is, where this horizontal line is. That length will give you the length of this index. So, however, you measure the length of this index either before the experiment or after the experiment. Let me call it x. x is this much. Let's say this is x. This is l. So, hw is going to be hw is going to be l plus x. x is constant. The length of this index does not change. That is constant. Only once you measure it, that is constant. Every time the height of column changes, all what you have to do First, adjust the index such that tip of the index touches the surface here. Then get the reading where the index pin like on the on the index on the, on the scale where it shows reading number 1. Then get the measurement of the meniscus, the water column's meniscus. Reading 2, reading 1 difference will give you L. Already you have found X. L plus X is going to be HW. Every reading you get, you are going to measure R1 and R2 only. But before measuring R1 and R2, you have to ensure the pin is adjusted such that tip touches the surface. This is how we get the reading. Right? It has been tested once. Once they asked, after you establish both liquid columns, before you get the readings, there is one adjustment you have to do. What is it? So, you have to see the, the index pin, the tip of that, should be adjusted such that it touches the surface of water in the beaker. Right? That has to be the adjustment. That is how we get the readings. Right? When I do the experiment, you will understand this even more. Now, let us go into the experiment. Materials and apparatus, hairs apparatus, water and a copper sulphate su solution, copper sulphate or some liquid you can use, whether it mixes with water or not, does not matter, or any other suitable solution. A half meter ruler and a set square right half meter ruler that is to get the readings usually the apparatus will have scales on it then you don't need the half meter ruler if not you have to stick that set square set square is guys to you know like when this this is there you keep the set square like this and see what what is the correct reading when i do the experiment i will show it to you like whenever we use these tubes and you know next to that if you have the scale to get the correct reading, we use a set square. We use a set square. 
theory I have already explained. Can you see in this diagram also they have this pin here? Right. So including this pin only we are going to see HL. So on top of pin, how much is how much of height is there? How much is pin's length? Put together only, it's going to be HL and HW. And why do we use this clip here? I forgot to mention about that. What's the purpose of clip? After you suck the air out of it, you put the clip and tighten that so that the pressure remains same, doesn't change. Then you can release it. You can take your mouth out and you can do the rest of the experiment. If the clip is not there, after you establish the columns, how do you maintain that column? You can't keep it on your mouth itself because like when you, when you breathe, the, the, there will be fluctuations. So the water level will not stay stable. It won't remain stable. So to make sure water columns are maintained stable, after you establish the columns, you put this clip and tighten here. Right, if you can use a normal paper clip even, whatever the clip that can tighten this rubber tube. This part will be rubber tube. See, this is going to be glass tube. And this other part attached here for you to suck the air out will be rubber tube. So you can easily, you know, hold it. HW height of water column above the water level. HL is the height of liquid column above the liquid level in the beaker. Density of water, density of liquid. This already I have explained you. Gradient of the graph will be equal to rho L over rho W. Method. Arrange hairs apparatus as shown in figure with its limbs having ends dipped into water and liquid beakers. I have shown that in the diagram. Open the clip and suck air out either by mouth or by the syringe to form a water column and a liquid column in the respective limbs until the liquid column of lower density reaches maximum height. Right, until the liquid column of lower density. Understand which one reaches the maximum height? Whichever having lower density is going to have higher height, right? So lower density liquid only goes up faster, reaches the maximum height and then close the clip. Adjust each index until its tip touches the respective liquid level in the beaker. Arrange hairs apparatus as shown in figure with limbs having ends dipped into the water and liquid. With the help of the set square and using scales measure height HW of water column and height HL of liquid column and record these readings. So after you have arranged the tips properly, right, then get the readings. Loosening the clip slightly and again tightening it alternatively obtain a set of values HW and HL and record these values. So what they say here. First, you get it to the highest possible value. Highest possible value is, you bring it up to here, right, or here. Get the reading and then, you know, you need multiple readings, right? Slowly release this a little bit, it will come down. Get the second reading. Release it again a little bit, it will come down. But it's very difficult to do that, guys. Even if you release a you know, little bit for a millisecond, quickly it falls down. So that is okay. If it falls down, then what you have to do? Again, you have to suck it and at a different level, you have to get the readings. So around five different readings we are going to take. Loosening the clip slightly and again tightening it uh, alternatively, obtain a set of values HW and HL uh, and record these values. Clear? So we need like four or five sets of values for HW and HL to draw a straight line graph. The gradient of the straight line graph is going to give us the relative density of the other liquid that we have used there, right? Do you understand the concept now? Do you understand how the hairs apparatus is being used? Now, let's see how we are going to do the experiment. You must be very careful because the past paper questions that comes in these hairs apparatus and all, tricky questions they ask, right? Unless you do the practical, unless you do the experiment yourself, it's very difficult to, you know, answer those questions. So when I do the experiment, observe closely, Try to understand each and every step I do and why I do that understanding must be there. Right? So now let's do the experiment and see. Students, if you look at the materials and apparatus we have arranged for this experiment. This is a beaker with oil. The relative density of this oil is what we are going to find by this experiment. This is a beaker with water. Beaker with water. And there are a couple of clips. I'll show you when the when the 
experiment is in progress, I will tell you the use of these clips. And mainly, this is the apparatus that we call Hayes apparatus, Hayes apparatus, right? Look at the shape of this. It is also somewhat similar to a U-tube, but inverted, right? Can you see? There are two sides of it, see? This is the open end, it goes up all the way, up to here. Similarly, the other one also has an open end, open end here and then it, it goes all the way up and it is connected here. And at this point, we have another opening here through which we can suck the air out, through which we can suck the air. To suck the air out only, we have this arrangement, right? To suck the air, we can usually keep it in our mouth and suck it. If not, you can use a syringe also. If you have a syringe uh, which is uh, in the same size, you can use the syringe also to suck the air out of it, right? That's what the hair apparatus is. Now, how we are going to do this, the experiment, look at this. We will keep the beaker with water and the other liquid under this, right? Then we will lower the tube so that it goes under the water level. Like this on the other side, I have to keep the oil as well, right? Then let me keep oil as well, look at this. You have to raise it up, keep the oil underneath and bring it down. Now you can see in one limb, one limb of this hair's apparatus, we have kept the beaker with water. Under the other limb, I have kept the beaker with oil. You have to ensure the end of both limbs have gone under the liquid levels. Now what we will do, we will suck the air from this end. We will suck the air from this end. Let us see what happens. Let me, let me show it to you. When I suck the air, what happens? You can see when I sucked it, can you see both liquid levels have gone up, both liquid levels have gone up. How does this work? Let me explain to you, listen. Now when I suck the air in this area, when I suck from here, since the air exhausts from there, the pressure will reduce because in the same volume less air molecules are going to be in here because of that the pressure reduces. Whereas at this point, if you look at the surface here, the pressure on the surface of this liquid will be equal to the atmospheric pressure. Why atmospheric pressure? Because it is open to the atmosphere. So the pressure at this point is equal to atmospheric pressure. So if I tell you an equation, look at this. If I say the pressure inside here is P, which has to be something less than atmospheric pressure because originally before I sucked the air, that also would have remained at atmospheric pressure. But after I sucked some air out, the pressure would have reduced. So let us say the pressure inside here is P, right? That means at this water level, can you see the water level is here? At this water level, pressure is P. Then from this point to this point, that means the height of water column in this limb above the water surface in the beaker, see this is the water surface in the beaker, above the water surface in the beaker, if I say height of this water column is H or HW, height of water, the pressure here I can say P here, pressure P here plus H rho G, H rho G of water, H of water, rho of water and G, G is a gravitational acceleration. But this P plus H rho G 
should be equal to atmospheric pressure because within water at the same height wherever you measure it has to be atmospheric pressure it must be the same pressure so if it is outside atmospheric pressure inside the tube also at this point it has to be atmospheric pressure because it's a continuous water under that so i can say p plus h rho g should be equal to atmospheric pressure same applies on the other side also if you have pressure p here all these weights connected gas here connected air connected air so the pressure must be p at this point as well and let's take the height of oil from here to here right above the oil surface within the beaker the height of oil column let it be ho height of oil then i can say the pressure at this point within the within the tube the pressure will be at this point p plus h rho g p is here h is the height of this oil column rho the density of oil g is the gravitational acceleration but that also has to be equal to atmospheric pressure because this oil is also open to the atmosphere so at this point pressure has to be atmospheric pressure so look at this p plus h rho g for water p plus h rho g for oil both are equal to atmospheric pressure i can equate them when i equate them both sides p will get cancelled then you will have h rho g and h rho g h water rho water g h oil rho oil g cancel the g you will have h water rho water and h oil rho oil equal this is the same equation we had in the youtube as well right so if i can find different different values of h o and h w i can draw a graph h w on the y axis h o on the x axis then the equation will be like this h w equals rho o over h o rho o over rho w into h o h w equals rho o over rho w into h o so h w versus h o graph has to be a straight line through origin and the gradient will give us rho o over rho w density of oil divided by density of water which is what we call we call relative density of oil and as i mentioned earlier can you see both both liquids are kept separately they don't mix with each other unless you suck very fast that it comes and mix here which is an error in the experiment right where we have to redo it from the beginning again if that happens right so if you do it properly the both both liquids will not mix that's why i said even if these two are like mixable liquids right even even if if this oil is something that can mix with water it is not a problem we can do this experiment because they never get in contact with each other on the other hand if it is some acid which is harmful to inhale then you should not suck using this there you have to use a syringe and using the syringe you can do this sometimes even they have asked this in the exam if you are going to do this for a high high density acid uh, inhaling of which can be harmful how would you do this experiment nothing much all everything same rather than sucking it with mouth you will have to use a syringe to suck the air out right so what we are going to do we are going to measure the height of water height of oil we take five different readings like that and draw the graph but how do we get the height of water there is a complication in me measuring the height of these liquid columns as well i'll tell you why you can see look at the scale where does the scale start scale starts here 0 1 2 3 likewise it goes but i have to take the measurement from the water level here from the water surface but the scale doesn't go up to there you can't take the scale there so how are we going to get the reading from this point we have a different mechanism for that what's the mechanism can you see we have a metal index here i'll show you see there is a metal index like this metal index right this metal index can be fixed here such that look at this we can insert this index through this hole and it can be adjusted up and down see i can adjust it up and down so where do we fix it how do we fix it the tip of this index the tip of this index should 
touch the water surface, the liquid surface. Look at this. Look at it here, look at it here. Right. So I have fixed it, touch the tip of that index, marginally touches the surface. It should not go inside the surface of liquid, it just marginally touches the surface, I have fixed it. Now see how we get the measurement. We will be getting this reading, reading number 1. We will be getting the reading of this water level. You have to be careful, there will be a meniscus. So meniscus bottom level has to be read, meniscus bottom level, you get the reading here. The difference between these two readings, reading 1 and reading 2 will give you the height of water above this index, above this index. Then separately we will measure the length of index at the beginning of experiment or at the end of experiment you can measure the length of this index from the tip up to here. So keep the tip at 0 and get the reading that will tell you the length of index, right. So that length of index plus the height above this will give us the total height of water column, total height of water column. Same thing I have to do on the other side as well, right. Let me lower the index. Until it marginally touches the liquid. See at this point, it marginally touches, tip of the index marginally touches at this point. It marginally, that it slightly touches the surface of oil and then you tighten these screws. You can tighten these screws. Similarly, we would have already taken the height of this index. Then we will get this reading and the reading here, the difference between those two will give us the extra height above the index, how much the height of this oil. So the height of index plus this height will give us the total height of oil. That is how we are going to take the measurement. So we won't be measuring the index, uh, height of index every time which we can measure at the end. So every time what I am going to do, I'm, every time means like when you suck it more the levels will go up. When you release it the levels will go down. So we are going to take 5 different levels starting with approximately like. 10, 15 centimeter and then going up by 5 centimeter every time approximately, you can't exactly get 5 centimeter, approximately 5, 6 centimeter increment every time, get 5 different readings, right. So what readings will we get? We will get the readings of this indicator or index and the reading of the meniscus here, reading of the indicator on the other side, reading of the meniscus. So 4 readings we have to take for every instance, 5 such instance we have to do five such instances. Why? To draw a straight line graph at least four, preferably five points will be required to get accurate answers, right. So this is the first instance, let us get the readings now, let us get the readings now. By the way, so I told you when I start doing the experiment, I will explain the usefulness of these clips. Can you see? I am using this clip here, I am using this clip here to ensure after I sucked it and I brought this to the preferable level, this is tightened, it is airtight, right. To, to airtight this tube, we are using this clip. Sometimes we can even just hold it with hand and do the experiment, but it will be difficult holding it with hand and then adjusting these indices, getting the readings will be difficult. So ideally you have to use a clip. This is the clip that comes with this apparatus. But usually in the laboratories when we do this experiment, few students will get together and do this experiment. So one student can handle this, one student can look at the readings, another student can adjust these indices, right. But here since I am doing this all alone, doing this all alone, I preferred this clip so that you know easily I can tighten it. At the end of experiment, I will show you how to use this clip as well, right. For the moment, understand the meaningness, of, uh, meaningfulness of this clip. To airtight this tube, we are using this clip. Clear? Right, because 
the, the levels have to be stable. When I get the readings, level have to be stable. They shouldn't be fluctuating. Right, that's why we have to airtight it. Right, now let's get the readings. The reading at this point. See, one more thing you need to understand when we do the experiments, we never keep the apparatus like this. If I am doing the experiment, I have to keep it right in front of me such that I can see the scales directly. You shouldn't see the scales from the side, from the top, from the bottom. No, you have to see the scales directly. And if you are, suppose, let's say you are getting the reading of this one, your eye level has to be at the same level when you are getting the reading. Because the readings can slightly differ when you change the angles. Right? That's one primary concept, right? one basic concept when you do experiments in physics. But here, I have kept it turned like this just to show you all the outcomes very clearly. If I turn it around and keep it, you will not be able to see the readings clearly. That's why I have kept it like this. Right? But if you are doing the experiment, don't keep it like this. Make sure you keep it facing you. Right. So let's get the readings now. In the oil column, the index shows 9.1 here. This is at 9.1, 9.1 and this is at 14.4. The meniscus of oil, the top level of oil is at 14.4. I have already explained a couple of times earlier also, if there is a meniscus, you must always check the bottom level of meniscus. Meniscus means that curved surface. So the bottom level of that has to be taken. So 9.1 and 14.4, the difference is going to be how much? Uh, 5.3 centimeter. So this height is 5.3 centimeter, this much. With that, you have to add the height of the index as well to get the total length of this oil column. Similarly, on the other side readings, for the water column readings, this is at 9.6 centimeter, 9.6 centimeter and the Top level of water is at 13.3 centimeter, 13.3 centimeter, 13.3 centimeter. So 9.6, 13.3 difference is 3.7 centimeters, 3.7, which means this height, see, this height is 13.7. With that, you should add the height of index so that you can find the total height of water, HW and HO. This is one pair of reading that I have got, one set of readings. What should we do to draw a graph? We need multiple readings. How do we get multiple readings? I have to suck more so that the water level and the oil level increases approximately by 4 or 5 centimeters increment every time. Get 5 different readings. This is the first one. Let's get another 4 readings, then we can draw a graph comfortably. So when you want to suck it more, see, you have to loosen this and suck it more, bring it to a level higher than this. See, I have to loosen this, and loosen this, and suck it more, so that it goes to a higher level, and we'll get the reading now. Now I have taken this to a higher level than how it was earlier. Careful, once the level in the tube goes up, the level in the, in the beakers will go down because the liquid in the beaker only goes up in the tube. Then you will have to adjust the indices again. Index has to be brought down again. It won't be touching it now. So let me see. Now I have fixed it such that the tip of indices touch the upper surface of the liquids in each beaker. Let's try to get the readings now. Now the readings, the index is at 9 centimeter, 9 centimeter and the upper level of this oil is at 17.8 centimeter. 
So, this height has to be 17.8 minus 9, 8.8 centimeter plus the height of index will give us the height of oil. Similarly, on this side, this is at 9.5 centimeter and the height of uh, this oil level or water level is at 16.5 centimeter, 16.5. When you are doing this in the laboratory to get the readings, if the, if the scale is not very close to the liquid columns. You can use a set square and get the readings. I will show you how to use a set square. You have to take the set square and take this perpendicular side of it, 90 degree side of it, right, perpendicular. And how we keep it here? That is how you keep it. That means keep it one side of it, rest it on the scale and adjust it up and down until it comes equal with the meniscus level and then get the reading like this. So, you can keep it adjust up and down when it comes right at the meniscus level, you have to get the reading. That is how you get the readings in the laboratory, right. So, now we have got the second set of readings. What next? You have to raise it by another few centimeters and get the third reading. You are planning to get five different readings to draw the graph, right? So, as I mentioned earlier, let us loosen this and suck, suck more air out of it so it will go up. Right, so that is the third levels of uh, columns, liquid columns. As I mentioned earlier, when the liquid columns goes up, the level in the beaker will go down. So, you have to adjust the index accordingly. I have adjusted the, the indices such that they touch the surface of uh, upper surface of liquids in the beaker. Let us get the four readings that we have to get. Now, the index is at 8.8 .8 centimeter index on the oil column side. Upper, upper border of the oil column, the meniscus is at 25.4 centimeter, 25.4 centimeter. Similarly, on the other side, this is at 9.3 centimeter. This is at 9.3 centimeter and the upper level of the water column is at 23.5 centimeter, 23.9.3 and 23.5, 9.3 and 23.5. So, you get the difference, you can get the length of this column, right. So, that is the third set of readings we have got. We need another two readings, let us raise it up by another few centimeters. Now, the tip of these indices have come up, that means the water level have gone down. So, let us bring it down now. Now, let us get the readings. The index is at 8.7 centimeter and the upper level of this uh, oil column is at 30.1 centimeter, 30.1, 30.1. Similarly here, this is at 9.2 centimeter, 
this is at 9.2 centimeter and the water level is at 27.8 centimeter. As I explained earlier, we can subtract and get the height at the height of the index so that you will get the total length of this water column. Similarly, other one. So, HO and HW are ready. So, we have got four sets of readings. Let us get one more reading. With five readings, we can get a good straight line graph and we can get accurate answers. One more reading. Now you can see the oil level has gone above this clip, it is here and the water level is right below this clip. You have to be very careful when you do this at this level because if you suck a little bit more, the oil can come to the other side and get mixed, right. So you have to very slowly, carefully suck it when it comes very close to this, uh, this upper, upper point of this uh, tube. Now let us get the readings, but before the readings what should I do? I should adjust the indices. Now the index in water just touches the top surface of water. Now the readings, this is at 8.6, this index is at 8.6 and the oil level up here is 35.1, 35.1. Similarly, the index here is at 9.1 and the water level is at 32.3, 32.3 centimeter, 32.3 centimeter. So, we can get the differences as I mentioned earlier, but one thing we had to get now, we had to get the height of the index on both sides, the indices height we had to find. Suppose if you do not have this index in your laboratory apparatus, it has to be there, but if it is missing, you can even just take a stick or a small piece of uh, string uh, or wire piece or something and you can attach it with a rubber band and you can use that as well, right. It does not necessarily have to be exactly the same thing. But originally, this has to be the index, this is how the index is, but if the index is not there, a similar another, another part can be used here another material can be used here. So now let us do, let us remove these beakers from the apparatus and let us try to find le the length of the index here. Let us give it some time until all this oil and water uh, drains into the beaker. After that, we will remove the beakers and get the length of the uh, indices. Now, all the water and oil has almost drained into the beaker. Let us remove the beakers. Let me show you how we are going to get the height of these indices, right. What we are going to do, first look at the scale again, this is where 0 is, that means the bottom of this is at 0. Let me raise this tube a little bit further, right. Now the tip, you can see the tip is here, the tip is here. Let me raise the tip until the tip just, just comes to 0, the tip must be at 0, right. Then if I get the reading of this one, that should give me the height of the index. So, how do we 
keep it at 0. Maybe you can keep a z square or a ruler. After loosening it, keep it like this so that the tip of the index is at 0 and tighten the screw. Similarly, we have to get the measurement of the other index as well. Loosen the screw, keep it at 0, tighten the screw. Now the tip of both indices I have fixed it at 0. So if we can get the reading on this, these two indices that should give us the height of indices, right. Let us get the readings now. Let us get the reading of this side. This is at 12.3. So you know the bottom tip is at 0, the reading is 12.3. So the total height of this index has to be 12.3 centimeters. Similarly, the other one is also at 12.3. Ideally it has to be equal. Both indices must be of the same height, but anyway we double checked it. This is also at 12.3. That means the height of the other index as well 12.3 centimeters, right. So now we have got the 5 readings that we wanted to get. We measured the height of index as well. Now with these two we can get HO and HW for all 5 instances and we can draw the graph. Before I wind up this experiment, let me show you how we are going to use this clip as well. Okay, this is the clip that you get in the uh, laboratory with, with this apparatus what we get is this clip, right. I will show you how we can use this clip. When we press it, you know it gets open here. When we press it, it gets open here and when I release it, it gets tightened. So how we use this clip to airtight the suction tube, I will show you. First you send one end of it through this hole and then press these two and open here. Through the opening send it back again, look at this like this, like this, right. So what will happen? When you, when you have released it, see when you, when you leave it like this, it will get airtight. And when you release it, you have to loosen this and if you want, you can take it out as well when you, when you suck it to reduce the pressure inside and then after that again put it in the same way and release it, it gets airtightened. So this is how we use this clip. But when, when we do the, do the same experiment in the laboratory, when we do the same experiment in the laboratory, there will be multiple students doing it together. Then it is easy for one of you to focus on this, one of you to get the readings, another one to adjust this index, it is possible. When, a, when the same person does all these, it might be a little difficult to handle all that. That is why I thought compared to this, the other paper clip would have been easy for us. However, you can use this clip or the other clip even without clip. If you can just hold it like this with your hand itself, airtight, you have, you have to make sure it is airtight. It should not fluctuate. So if you are good enough to hold it with your hand even, that is fine. So find some mechanism to tighten here so that the air does not leak through this. Right, this is the clip that comes with the apparatus which we usually find in the science laboratory or even you can get this kind of clip and use it right. All right, so that is all in this experiment. Now we have to take the readings, draw the graph and see what relative density we get for this oil. Students, you can see the readings that we have got. I have written here HL. So this HL is before adding this 12.3 centimeter, before adding the height of the pin. So let us rewrite HL now, including this height of the index also. 5.3, 12.3, 17.6, 8.8, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 12.3, 21.1, 
Here 3.7, 12.3. .3. See XL, XW, both are same. Both sides pins have the same height. 15, 16. 7, 12.3, 19.3. 14.2, 12.3, 26.5. 18.6, 12.3, 30.9. 23.2, 12.3, 35.5. You know, you remember the formula HW equal rho L over rho W. That's what the relative density into HL. Y equals MX. HW in the Y axis. So, this is going to be the Y axis values. This is going to be the X axis values. Shall we draw the graph and see? The gradient should give us the relative density. Graph. Draw the axis. Draw the axis. H L in centimeters, H W in centimeters. We'll take two by two, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty four, twenty eight, thirty two. 36, 40. HL, look at the heights. HL, maximum 38.8. Same scale would work. We have up to 35.5. So, this point is going to be 36. Right. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, 32, 36. First point, 17.6 and 16. 17.6 and 16. 17, 16, 18, 17.6 and 16. Let's mark it 17. Uh, this is 18. So, 17.6. More closer to 18, isn't it? Right, seventeen point six on the x-axis and eighteen on the uh, sixteen on the y-axis. Twenty-one point one and nineteen point three. Twenty-one point one, nineteen point three. Twenty-two here. Twenty-one point one must be in the middle. Nineteen point three. Twenty-one point one, nineteen. Eighteen, nineteen point three. Right. Twenty-eight point nine, twenty-six point five. Twenty-eight point nine. Twenty-eight thirty. Somewhere in the middle. 28.9 and 26.5. 26.5. 20, 24, 26 is here. 26.5. 28.9. 24, 26.5. Next. Twenty one was here, twenty eight. Okay. Next one. Thirty three point seven, thirty point nine, thirty three point seven, thirty two, thirty four, thirty three point seven, thirty three point seven, close to thirty four, close to this line, and thirty point nine. Thirty is the middle one, thirty point nine means around thirty one, right? Right. 38.8, 35.5. Somewhere in this line. Yeah. And 35.5. 36, 35.5. Look at this. 35.5. 
look at the values 38.8 and 35.5. These are the points that we get. We know the graph has to be a straight line through the origin. Let us draw the graph and see whether we get something like that. Almost all the points are on the line, only one point slightly deviated, slightly deviated. All other four points are perfectly on the graph, right? Perfectly on the graph. Now, we need two points, right? Let me draw this line again. Yes. Right. Now, I need two points to find the gradient of this, find the gradient. Ideally, we should take two points that go through the intersection of one vertical and horizontal lines. I have one point like that here. This is at 24 and 22. 22. 24 and 22. I need to find another point like that. Maybe I can take this point. This point is 2 comma 2, is it? I think it has not exactly started with the origin. Let us draw the line once again. Let us draw the line once again. Look at this. Make sure you start it at origin correctly. Yes. Right. Now, the two points that we have to take. This point is a perfect one. This is at 24 and 22. Yes, that is at the perfect one. 2 and 2, I cannot take it. There is a slight gap. Usually in the exam questions when they, when they give you the graph, at least there will be a couple of points where the graph goes through one vertical line and one horizontal line intersection. So, when you want to find the gradient, you must take points like that only. If you take any other points, you will not be given marks because you are not sure. See, if it is something like this point, we do not know the y coordinate of this, right? We can't exactly find it. So, that is not advisable. But here, when we draw it in the graph, now I have taken this point ok, but I do not have another point like that. Then, then what we can do, 0, 0 can be taken. If not, if not, we can take, I will take this point. Not very ideal though, but since I do not have any other points, I will take that. This is going through 36 and this is right in the middle, right? 32, 34, it is right in the middle. I can say 33, 33, correct? Right. Yeah, it works because can you see from 0 to 22, it has gone up by 24. That means for every 22, it is going up by 24. That means 11, 12 is the ratio. If you check here again, 22 to 33, 11, 24 to 36, 12. 11, 12 ratio perfectly comes. I think that is the right point. Gradient, to find the gradient, gradient. 33 minus 22 over 36 minus 24, that is 11 by 12, that will be 0 0.9, 9, 12, 108, 2 balance 20, 1, 80, we can say 7, yeah, 0 0.917 is the answer, that means relative density Of the oil that we have used, coconut oil we have used, 
relative density of coconut oil is 0 0.917. It's just a ratio. It wouldn't have any units for it. Relative density is density to density ratio. That's the answer we get. Clear? Very nicely we have got a graph. Correctly you take two points. Find the gradient. The answer is this. Right? Very simple experiment. But you have to be a little careful when doing the experiments. Right? And, and the questions can be asked in multiple ways. Let's see how it has been tested in the past paper questions. Let's see the past paper questions that have been tested on this experiment. First, I have taken 2018 paper. An experimental setup of Hairs apparatus used in school laboratory is shown in figure 1. As shown, XW and XL represent the mark M of the relevant indicator from the water and liquid surfaces in the beakers respectively. All right, okay. So, XW is the length of indicator in the water side. XL is the length of indicator on the liquid side. Okay. What is the purpose of using a clip in Hairs apparatus? You know that after we establish the columns, the liquid and water columns, to maintain it, we have to put that clip. So, let's say... To maintain the water and liquid columns, liquid columns after establishing them, after establishing them. The densities of water and the liquid are DW and DL respectively. If HW and HL represent the heights of the water column and the liquid column in glass tubes as measured from the mark M of the respective indicators. Derive an expression for H1 or HL in terms of HW, DW, XW, X, DL and HL. Now look at this. We can say... If the pressure here is P naught, P naught plus this whole length. So, they say this is what is HW. So, with that add, add XW also. So, P naught plus HW, XW rho G. Similarly, on the other side, this is HL uh, and then you have XL also. Both have to be added. When we did the experiment, H, HW and HL included the height of that pin as well. Here, they have not included. Therefore, we had added separately. Let's write it, right? Let's say, they say derive, right? Derive an expression. So, you are right. Let's say, if the pressure inside the tube is P node, you can say P node plus HW plus XW that's the total height of water column, DWG equals P naught plus HL, XL, rho DL, DL, DLG. Now, we have to make HL the subject of it, right? P naught, P naught cancelled. So, HL plus XL is going to be uh, GG cancelled. I will write this one first. DW over DL. Why the DL has to come down? HW. XW. This is not X naught. This has to be XL, isn't it? XL. XL. Okay. HL plus XL equals HW, D, DW over DL plus XW dw over dl now take this xl also to the other side you will have hl equals dw over dl hw xw dw 
over dl this xl goes the other side minus xl why i put a bracket for that all those values within the bracket are constants xw xl are the height of those pins the in indices which are constant dw dl are the density of water and the liquid which are constant so this is going to be in the format of y equals mx plus c y equals mx plus c is going to be the graph now if the expected heights of the liquid column and the water column are significantly different to each other more attention has to be paid at the height of height than the other when planning out the experiment to take a set of readings and plot a graph what is the height you pay more attention one with smaller height larger height explain your answer giving reasons now look at this understand what they are asking this is how the tube is going to be now say this is one liquid this is the other liquid now you can see one is with lower height other one is with the higher height they are asking you have to focus on one of them more which one are you going to focus more are you going to focus more on the smaller height or are you going to focus more on the bigger height larger height when i was explaining the theory also i explained it to you we have to focus more on the larger height because there is a reason for it what's the reason when you suck the air out this is the one which is going to come to this point first right whichever having the higher height will reach that point first this reaching that point has to be avoided because it can mix on the other side or it can even come out to avoid all that we have to ensure the liquids do not come to the highest point of that you know tube so if you can ensure the one with higher height if it doesn't come definitely smaller height also won't come because that's always less than that right so always we focus on the uh, column with larger height right explain your answer uh, so larger height is the answer we have to focus on that why to avoid the liquids reaching the very top of the tube and getting mixed into the other column into the other limb next every time after changing the heights of liquid and water columns in the tubes and closing the clip you need to make another adjustment before taking the uh, measurements with regard to new heights write down the experimental procedure you should follow to make this adjustment remember after every time we establish the uh, heights of the liquid and water before we get the reading there is one adjustment what did we do we had to ensure that index the tip of the index touches the surface of uh, liquid so the index in each column should be adjusted should be adjusted such that such that the tip of the pin touches the surface of water or liquid in the beaker the beaker next the apparatus shown in figure 2 can be used to vary the air pressure inside the tubes of the hair's apparatus this system works on bernoulli's principle i'll show you the apparatus here yeah, this is the apparatus right we'll come back to that 
the air pressure inside the tube T can be changed by adjusting the speed of the water, speed of the narrow water jet passing through the section X of the apparatus with the help of the tab. The position A of the rubber tube shown in figure 2 can be connected to the position A of the rubber tube shown in figure 1 to make an improved version of the hair apparatus. Now look at this. This is how the hair apparatus is. Right, here we have the rubber tube, right? That can be connected here. Then what happens when this water falls faster? You remember we studied few things regarding Bernoulli's concept where continuous flow of liquid is there. Fluid mechanics we studied some, remember? Let's say if the fluid flows like this, the cross section here A, cross section here is A dash. The velocity here is V, velocity here is V dash. You know A V should be equal to A dash V dash. Incompressible liquid on a constant uniform flow, uniform flow, then you can write whichever the cross section you consider, the volume that passes through that cross section in a second has to be equal. So A V here, A dash V dash there, it's same. Then you can say since A is much bigger than A dash, V has to be much less than V dash, then only A V and A dash V dash will be equal. So liquid at this point will be passing very faster, faster than the previous point. That's, that's what we studied as continuity theory, continuity theory of fluids. Then con, 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 uh, as a continuation of that, we studied the Bernoulli's theory, right? What Bernoulli's theory, the summary of that is, when the velocity increases, pressure will differ. Look at this. If pressure here is P and if the pressure here is P dash, when P increases, when the velocity increases, because of this, P will be much greater than P dash. Not much greater than, but it will be greater than P dash. That means when the velocity increases, the pressure at that point reduces. When the velocity increases, the pressure at that point reduces. A similar problem we have here. Look at this. When the velocity increases, right, when I open this tap more and more, the velocity is going to increase, right? Here, we at this point. Okay, at this point, because you can see it's a very narrow part. So, this velocity increases. When velocity increases, the pressure is going to reduce. If pressure reduces at this point, all over the pressure, pressure is going to reduce, then you can expect the liquids to climb up the column. This is what we did, but earlier we sucked the air out using the mouth. But remember I told you if it is a hazardous liquid or poisonous liquid, we can't do that. Then an arrangement like this could be useful. So to get different, different pressures here, you can adjust the speed of it, right? You tap, you re release this tap more and more, speed increases. You release it slowly, the speed reduces. By adjusting the speed, you can get different levels of pressure and the heights will be different accordingly. Write down the procedures used in Hare's apparatus available in the school laboratory and improved version of Hare's apparatus mentioned in part B when establishing the liquid columns in the tubes. Hare's apparatus available in the school. How do we do it? How do we establish the liquid columns there? by sucking the air out using mouth. Here, improved version of air separate. Here, how do we do it? By reducing the press pressure, or let's say this way. How do we reduce the pressure by opening the tap at different levels? That's how, that's how you are going to adjust the pressure within the tube. I explained that already. Give one main advantage of using the improved setup mentioned in B over the apparatus generally available in, uh, in the school laboratory. 
If you are using a poisonous liquid, you can't suck the air using your mouth. I told you that. If the liquid is poisonous, we cannot suck it out. Suck or oh, suck using mouth. Next. A graph plotted using a set of readings obtained from the improved setup mentioned in B over the apparatus mentioned in B above is shown below. The graph shows the variation of the heights HW and HL of the liquid columns of water and sulfuric acid respectively. In this experiment, you are provided with a scale which can measure the length with an accuracy of 1 millimeter. What is the maximum fractional error? associated with HW measurements taken in this experiment. When you say maximum error, you know error is the error, error, fractional error is error divided by measurement. This is what you call fractional error. Error is 1 millimeter and they are talking about maximum error. Where? Maximum. That means when M is minimum, the measurement is minimum only, you get the maximum error. Look at the points we have taken here and find where the measurement is less HW. Here you have the highest HW, right? This is the point where HW is minimum. This point, can you see that's the last point? That's This is 90, 140, so that has to be 100. So the lowest HW has to be 100. Then the maximum error is, this is in millimeters, right? Uh, into 10 to the power minus 3 meter means that millimeter. So, it is 1 millimeter divided by 100, which is 0 0.01. You can give it as 1 percentage also. Huh? Multiplying this by 100, it will be percentage, 1 percentage. Using the two points P and Q on the graph, calculate the relative density of sulfuric acid. Two points P and Q. They have given the coordinates 130, 80, 480, 270. 130, 80. 480, 270. Correct? Yes. Also, look at the equation. We already got the equation, remember? The M is going to give you dW by dL, not dL by D, dW. Because since they have taken HL on the y axis, HW on the x axis, you get 1 over relative density, 1 over relative density. Anyway, now they are asking the gradient only. Gradient. Calculate the relative density. Okay, let us say gradient 270 minus 80, 480 minus 230, 130. So, 1 over relative density, this is 190, 350. So, relative density dr 350 over 190. Am I right? 480, 270. 270 divided by 80 is uh, look at the points, am I right? 270 and 80. 480 and 130. Correct. Correct. 480 and 130. So, you have 350 over 190. That is going to be 35 by 19. 1 point. 160 will be 8, 152, 80, 80 you can say 4, 40 will be 2, 1.842, 1.842 is the relative density that you have got, right, so it is concentrated sulfuric acid, so you can have high density like that, clear? So that's all they have asked in that that past paper question.
Now let's see another similar one on the same experiment tested in 2009. 2009. Figure 1 shows an experimental setup of Hayes apparatus used in a school laboratory to measure the relative density of liquid. In the figure, water and liquid labels, liquid are labeled A and B. So this is water, this is liquid. Given approximate value of, for the diameter in centimeter of the tube in both given but needed for the experiment. Remember I told you for this kind of experiments, the diameter of the tube we use has to be, should not be too small. If it is too small, what will happen? The surface tension would come into play, right? Surface tension also will come into play. So to avoid the impact of surface tension, we usually keep it the diameter around 5 millimeter to 10 millimeter. That's the range. So they asked you to give one value in centimeters. Let's say something in between, let's say 0.7 centimeter. Those who have done this experiment or those who have seen the experiment when I did that, you would have seen that like, like take it like this. So that's like almost like a little bigger than your pen. That's the thickness, right? So that's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6 centimeters, 0 0.7 centimeters. Name the measuring instrument that is not shown in the figure given but needed for the experiment. Measuring instrument means it has to be the meter table, right? Meter, meter ruler. Half meter ruler would be enough. Half meter ruler. State clearly how you would establish and maintain water and liquid columns in the arms of the hair apparatus. You suck the air out and put the clips to tighten it. Uh, through the rubber tube, suck the air out. Let's say first we will say remove the clip or loosen the clip, loosen the clip. Then through the rubber tube suck the air out and establish the columns. Then tighten the clip. Then tighten the clip. What is the special advantage of this method over the YouTube method? The two liquids do not come into contact. So if the, if the liquids can react with each other or if they can mix with each other, YouTube method cannot be used, it can be used. So let's say this method can be used even if the two liquids mix or react with each other. In order to determine the surface tension as well as the density of liquid, a student has modified the hair's apparatus by replacing its both arms with identical capillary tubes in internal radius R as shown in figure. So I, I told you like if the radius becomes smaller and smaller, then the impact of surface tension will be significant. That's what he has done. He has kept capillary tubes inside such that surface tension is going to increase. Now let's see what, what he is asking. Let P0 be the pressure of air, the water, pressure of air above the water and liquid meniscus. Uh, HW and HL be the heights of columns, DW and DL be the densities of TW and TW, TL be the tensions of water and liquid respectively, surface tensions, huh? surface tensions. If PL, PW are the pressures at the point W and L respectively, write down expressions for PW and PL in terms of relevant parameters. Now look at this. 
Hmm. This is how the water is going to be. This point is equals W. You have the this is how the tube goes. They say this point is P naught, is it? Right. This height, this is water HW. So we usually write it as P naught plus HW rho W G. But this time there is a surface tension here. Because of surface tension, because of force acting like surface tension, we will be studying later. So this surface tension part, if you do not understand, probably you would not understand. But after studying surface tension, you can always come back and revisit. There is this chapter towards the end of your syllabus known as properties of matter. In properties of matter, we will be studying about surface tension, right. Only thing I can tell you at this point, when you are talking about pressure, when you move from this point to this point, when you cross this surface, pressure will drop by 2 T by R. T is the surface tension. So, when you are writing the pressure P naught minus 2 T by R, plus h rho g you have to write. Understand why 2 t by r because of surface tension. I can't explain much about it now because that is another lesson that we have to study later. But since it is the final exam, they can, they can even you know relate to any, 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 any lesson within your syllabus. So, let us write the answer p w this is point w p w will be p node minus 2 T w over r, T w is the water st surface tension plus H w d w g. Similarly, P l will be equal to same format right 2 T l over r radius is same right capillary tube radius is same plus H l d into d l d l g h l d l g relevant parameters assume that the contact angles of water and liquid with glass are zero so that is a important sentence when it comes to surface tension let us not go into that too much maybe after you study surface tension you can come back hence derive an expression for h w in terms of this okay both p w and p l have to be equal why why this P w must be equal to the pressure here which is atmospheric pressure pi. So, P w must be equal to pi. Similarly, P l is also equal to pi. That is how P w and P l are equal. P w the formula that we got P naught minus 2 T w over R H w D w G. P l is P naught minus 2 T l over R H l d l g p naught p naught cancelled they want h w to be there right h w will be let me take that first when you divide by d w g you will get d l over d w into h l plus this will go as plus on the other side right uh, d w g has to come down 1 over d w g this will go as 2 t w over r minus 2 t l over r. y m x all these are constants all these are constants c clear so again the gradient is going to give you d l over d w d l over d w that is the relative density of the particular liquid right. Next if you draw the graph h w versus h l and if you know the values of d w t w r and g what quantities should you extract from the graph to determine t l and d l. To extract d l you need the gradient of the graph gradient. To extract T L, to find T L, you just need the intercept of the graph, right? D W, G, R, T W, everything is known. You do not even need the gradient, only the intercept is enough. T L intercept is enough. Clear? Those are the parameters that you have to derive from the graph in order to find D L and T L. Why is it always suitable to have the heights of water and liquid columns as large as possible? 
to reduce or to minimize the fractional error. Fractional error means error divided by the length that we measure. Error is going to be the same for the meter ruler you are using. The error is going to be always one millimeter or half a millimeter. But if you can maximize the length that you measure, then the fractional error will reduce, right? Which improves the accuracy. So let's say to minimize, to minimize the fractional error, fractional error, to minimize the fractional error. Clear? So, that's all the past paper questions that have come in this experiment. I have explained you the concept. We have done the graph. We have done the experiment, drew the graph, found the value of relative density of oil. Then I have taken two nice past paper questions that have come on this experiment. Right? Practice this very well. Go through the practical part. When I am doing the practical, go through that part again and again at least three, four times, you know, understand every point and, you know, register it here. You have around 40 to 50 experiments maximum you have. So, all these experiments you had to watch it few times again and again so that in the exam you can answer every question correctly and get the best marks. Right. So, practice this. Let us meet up with another experiment in the next session.